Let's get it. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Let's get it. Let's get it. Uh huh. Rock and Royal. Uh -huh. Welcome to Rock and Navy. another edition uh -huh. of uh -huh. the Cougar Bee uh -huh. Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Walker, here for another episode where I'm back on the hardwood, but sticking with our theme for the week of women's athletics. If you haven't caught it yet, uh, my interview with incoming BYU women's soccer transfer, Ellie Walbrook, the former national champion at UCLA, is coming home. Coming home, uh, well, about 20 minutes from home. She's from the American Fork Highland area to uh, play for Jennifer Rockwood at BYU. So you can catch that. You scroll back a little bit in the feed. As always, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, all of those good places. Uh, you can find this podcast everywhere. Subscribe, rate, review. We really appreciate it. It doesn't cost you guys anything. So go on out. Uh, we really appreciate it. And I'm on the hardwood now. Uh, I sat down a couple days after... A new career high for BYU women's basketball star Nani Falatea, the 5'9 sophomore out of Salt Lake City, East High School, uh, and Harriman High School. Uh, she uh, She's in her second year, her second active year with the Cougars, and she is taking a massive step up. So last year, 28 games played, zero starts, came exclusively off the bed, bench, about 10 or 11 minutes per game. Uh, Average is 3.1 points for the Cougars for a team that did not lack an offense. Shaley Gonzalez, uh, Paley Johnson Harding, Maria Albiero obviously running the point. Um, there were so many options last year that Nani didn't really have to score a lot. That's not the case so much this year. And Falatea has really found herself, I think, through the first 15 games of the 2022-23 season at BYU. We've talked about Lauren Gustin before, the walking double-double. Still leads the country in total double-doubles. Uh, tied for the lead, I believe, in total rebounds, rebounds per game. Uh, right up the top two in the country in all of those major statistical categories. But uh, Nani has found her shot, I think. She's, she's taking her shot and she's found her shot. She has started all 15 games of the year Averaging 13.7 points on 39.6% shooting, uh, including 18 three-pointers, uh, 4.6 rebounds, 5.1 assists per game, uh, double digits, blocks, steals, um, and turnovers. Got to clean that one up a little bit, Nani. Uh, but maybe most impressively, she's averaging 34.5 minutes per contest. So we talked about how Lauren Gustin has been playing almost every minute at BYU under first-year head coach Amber Whiting. Uh, Nani Falatea is kind of in the same boat in a lot of ways. Uh, she just never comes off the floor, and she's shooting the ball at a really, really nice clip right now, scoring in double figures almost every game of the season. I'm pulling it up right now. All but two games this year. Uh, three games, excuse me. All but three games this year. She scored in double figures, including the last three led by a career-high 24 points in a 66 to 41 win over St. Mary's. That capped a three game winning streak and moved the Cougars to two and two in West Coast Conference play with back to back wins over Pacific and St. Mary's ahead of Saturday's game against San Diego. So before you get to Saturday, 2 p.m. Mountain Time against San Diego, that's in the Marriott Center. You can watch it on the BYU TV and BYU TV app. Um, Listen to my conversation here with Walking Bucket from BYU Women's Basketball, Nani Falatea. I'm sitting here with uh, Nani Falatea, the other other BYU Fal uh, Falatea sister. Uh, <laughs> BYU sophomore, five foot nine, out of Salt Lake City, former East High star, former Harriman High star. I need to give credit to both of your schools. <laughs> Um, even though, which do you rep one more or the other? Are you an E girl um, or are I'm you? I'm more of an East girl. Okay. You know, I spent three years there, so that's that's yeah. where my heart is. Yeah, but shout out to Harriman too, because yeah, to you won Six A Player of the Year there, yeah. and that's where you got your degree and everything. So yeah. shout out to both, I guess. But E girl, yeah, <laughs> um, forever, forever. 
Um, but Nani Falatea, you may know her most because she is a walk it, walking bucket <laughs> for BYU basketball right now. Uh, just a couple of days removed from a career high 24 points on 10 of 16 shooting in a win over St. Mary's. This team is playing really well right now, Nani. Uh, and I feel like you have as much to do with it as anybody else. Lauren, who, right? Um, oh, no, just never. kidding. Lauren's awesome. That's my girl. Yeah, I just barely, I just barely talked to Lauren last week, so that's why I, I throw some stuff yeah. at her. But, but you're playing as well as anybody as well, and and really no greater performance, at least statistically, than what you did against St. Mary's. Just what was it about that game where you were kind of feeling the shot? You were opening. You were you were making them. Uh, you also had four rebounds, seven assists, three blocks, and three steals. So you're doing a little bit of stats de- yeah. stat sheet stuffing in that game. Like, what was so special <laughs> about this past weekend? Um, you know, it is kind of hard. I didn't practice or anything for a week. So I feel like more than anything, I was a little bit fresher than usual. But also, like, um, you know, all that stuff, that doesn't come without my girls. Like, like Lauren, you know, half of those, co- I'm coming off a ball screen from her. If she doesn't set that screen, I don't get that right. shot, you know. And those assists, you know, if they don't make those shots, I don't get those assists. So it's, uh, a lot of that credit goes to my team. For sure, for sure. Uh, always like a good point guard, deferring <laughs> credit to your uh, to your teammates. Um, well done. You, you did all of that against St. Mary's in 32 minutes per game, which I looked at the box score and, and how much you were playing that game. I'm like, okay, you never want to take her off the field, but she's got to be exhausted right now. Until I realized that actually drops your overall average. You're averaging like 35 minutes a game. Oh, really? Um, you're, you're just never coming off of the court anymore. <laughs> That's a big step up from where you were last year coming in, kind of getting your legs underneath you. Oh, yeah. Um, as a uh, as a freshman and 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 that sort of thing you started every game this year 15 games played 15 starts did it take you a while to get used to how much you were playing this year or do you not even think about it when you're in a game just like I want to I want to play um I definitely want to play it it was different coming from last year but like again like through all throughout high school and growing up it's not something that's too different so it's kind of like I took kind of a year doing something different than what I've been used to and now I'm back at it you know yeah, so last year was kind of the real difference maker yeah. where you were like, I'm not playing 35-plus yeah. minutes a mm-hmm. night. Yeah. Uh, what, what's been kind of the biggest change, to? Because there's also a little bit of a mentality change, like a mindset mm-hmm. change when you're in that starting lineup game after game, when you're on the floor during crunch time versus when you're coming off of the bench, trying to provide a spark, that kind of thing. Like, what's been sort of your, your mental shift like, I guess, this past year? Um, just that, that I have to do more. I mean, last year... I was definitely a role player. Uh, I could just, you know, I was there to hit open shots and play solid defense. And now I kind of have to do a lot of everything. Um, And I I also have to take a lot more shots and create more than I was last year. You know, I was letting other people create for the most part last year. So being able to flip it in my mind, like, I have to do it instead of, like, sitting back and watching, you know, Paisley Harding or Shaley Gonzalez do it. So that's definitely been a change in my mind. Did it... Did you, did it take some time to get accustomed to kind of that new role, I guess, a little bit? Like, is that what sort of the off-season workouts and summer workouts and that kind of thing, maybe even the early part of the season, is that sort of what that was a, What what that was part of that, was kind of getting accustomed to that new role that you were talking about? Yeah, for sure. Um, like, earlier, like, like I said earlier, like, um, it's not too different from what I've kind of done my whole life, but, like, getting back into it, for sure, it took, took a little bit of time. How new of a system is Coach Whiting's system compared to what you played in last year as well, too? Um, it's pretty new. I feel like everything, you know, head to toe is new. It's a brand new team, brand new coach, so, like, everything's going to be different than what it was last year. She likes to play a lot of defense. Yes, she does. Which okay. I know that, that looks good, like, you know, when you're holding teams mm-hmm. under 40, 50, 60 points sometimes. Yeah. Um, but that also means in practice there's a lot of defensive work and a lot of conditioning in particular mm-hmm. you're probably running a lot more than maybe you ever have in your life yeah. right now yeah there's a, there's a lot of running <laughs> i will say <laughs> lots of defense lots of slides <laughs> lots of defense lots of slides yeah. lots of conditioning yeah. work but when you see it kind of pay off on the weekend does it does it sort of click in your mind like okay like i can go through a little bit of pain right now because this is this is what we do on saturdays yeah for sure it's an entirely worth it Let's talk about your teammates some because you started off this conversation wanting to talk about them and I want to talk about Lauren Gustin in particular because the two of you have like this dynamic duo inside (laughs) out role going on right now that I think is really cool. 
just what do you guys kind of do to sort of further that partnership and work that partnership where it seems like the two of you are working really well together right now um a lot of it's just communication we talk to each other about everything how we can what we can do better for each other it's never going to be about like um like you need to do this you need to do that it's like what can i do to help you do this what can i do to to be better at that you know so I feel like that's a big part of it. A lot of those conversations, you 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 go up and you ask her, "What can I do to get you another your fifteen million to double double of the year?" <laughs> a lot of that is all her. She does all that on her own. She's just she's just a monster. Who's usually the first one to congratulate her on another double double? I don't know. I feel like everybody just like looks up and's like, "Oh yeah, she got it. Good job, Like, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> it's just kind of normal yeah. anymore. Like yeah. you guys stopped reacting. Yeah, but I mean, even the other day, one of our coaches, Lee, he said in the locker room, like Lauren. I will never take you for granted. And I think that's something that's really important for her to hear because what she does is amazing. You know, nobody else does things like this. And it's really important for all of us to acknowledge it and let her know that, like, we're not going to take that for granted. We really appreciate it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I, actually, that's really nice to hear because I think it's really easy to do sometimes yeah. is, is take somebody, a scoring threat like you, a shooting threat mm-hmm. like you, a double-double threat like her. I think it's yeah. really easy to do sometimes to be like, okay, like this is just sort of normal, mm-hmm. so that's kind of what's to be expected. Yeah. You guys learned last year losing 80-something percent of the offensive production, yeah. I think it was, and all with a huge senior class and Shaley yeah. and obviously – you guys kind of learned a little bit of about taking things for granted, mm-hmm. I think. What did you sort of learn during this offseason of a lot of change, coaching change yeah. that we talked about, the, the roster adjustments, that sort of thing, that made you a better player, I guess? Um, I guess that I can't really do things on my own. Like, um, I think a lot of, like, growing up, it's, like, you're not surrounded by, like, Division One players growing up, so it's, like, you feel like you have to do everything on your own, but I feel like this off season, it's been really nice to like sit back and be able to see like that like it's so important for me to be able to trust my teammates and trust my coaches and the people that surround me for me to be able to elevate my game. Um, speaking of elevating your game, I promise that I wouldn't ask you all basketball questions. <laughs> So this is my really awkward transition into, <laughs> okay. like, I've got a couple of non-basketball questions that I just want to know, like, about <laughs> okay. you, about Nani Palatea, yeah. uh, not even the BYU guard. Um, you speak Chinese? Um, yeah, somewhat, yes. Yeah. So you're still somewhat speaking. You grew mm-hmm. up speaking it. Yeah. I imagine that Salt Lake City School District has, like, a Chinese immersion Im- program. Yeah, immersion program. So, so you I went through that. that. Mm-hmm. What was that kind of like? It was really cool, actually. Um, I wish I would have stuck with it so I could still like speak fluently um but the high school that i went to didn't have the immersion program because it wasn't in my boundary so that's where i kind of lost it but it was really cool it's always nice to be able to be like yeah i can speak chinese i was gonna say do you still feel confident with like (laughs) anything in mandarin Um, or i mean i can like keep like small talk but it's not it's not that impressive anymore (laughs) (laughs) not nearly as cool as when you were like eight years Uh -uh, old no (laughs) well what was the uh Give me, give me a little taste of, like, what you still remember. Like, what's kind of the number one thing, the number one sort of, like, phrase or saying in, in Chinese that kind of sticks out in your mind, I guess? Um, Do you have, like, a mantra or anything that you repeat to yourself? Or I mean, I can say, like, hi, my name is Leolani, and I like to play basketball. <laughs> okay, so introduce yourself. Like, hi, my name is Nani. I'm a... I'm a guard at B- for the BYU women's basketball team. Um, ni hao, what y'all fang yani, what I da lan chou. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Chinese, one of the few languages I don't speak. I'm a romance language guy, so oh, really? Spanish, French, Portuguese. Okay. Um, never learned Chinese though, so I might have That's to get you to one. teach you me. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Can you teach me? Um, you know, I think maybe we can we'll find work, a better teacher. Maybe we'll work out like an NIL deal. I'll, I'll give you a little bit of money under yeah. the side to teach me just teach some Chinese. Mandarin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. We can work it out. Um, we'll figure it out. I'll talk to the guys over at <laughs> like the NIL <laughs> department and whatever. Make sure that we're not getting you uh, deemed ineligible for all that before we make <laughs> that happen point. for sure. Uh, you, uh, I shouldn't be surprised in this because you grew up in the Salt Lake area. Um, and I've known your family a little bit, mm-hmm. like I said, from covering you in high school and whatnot. But uh, you're the second of eight children yes. in your parents' mm-hmm. family. Yeah. That's a big family. Yeah. Well, what was it like growing up with such a big family? I mean, did you guys get to play, like, some four-on-four hoops while you were growing up? Or Oh, yeah, always. I mean, four-on-four, yeah. not really, because, you know, growing up, my little brothers were still little. They could barely dribble basketball. So yeah. mom and dad didn't, like, draft teams with all of the kids or anything? <laughs> no, it was more just one-on-one, <laughs> two-on-two <laughs> with the older kids. But it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed growing up with so many siblings. 
does doing something like that because i i'm from a family of two and a half kids i've got a half sibling and then just one full sibling so i i don't really know how any of this goes Mm -hmm. but do you learn like being the oldest of so many kids does that teach you like leadership at all uh i think so yeah i mean like it's just because for me i think a lot of like a big part of who i am is just um the fact that i'm an older sister you know i have six siblings underneath me that watch everything that i do and kind of will like emulate things that i do so that like for that like for that's really important to me so i just want to always be the best example that i can be to them even to my older sister too like she's a great example to me but i want to still be somebody that she can look to too for sure um (laughs) well and and when when you're coming to byu you get that BYU bump in terms of the fan base, people paying attention to you, people watching you, and you kind of become like mentors or role models to a lot of younger girls that look up, you know, they want to be BYU basketball players growing up and that sort of thing. Uh, it sounds like, I mean, something like that, like that's almost no more um, no more of a kind of a, a challenge or something you look up to than like your own younger siblings mm-hmm. that look up to you and, and kind of want to be like you, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is, did did you sort of feel that when you came when you came to BYU, kind of like the eyes of like a larger fan base, a larger group, sort of looking at you, I guess, and and little girls like looking at you, like you used to look at maybe previous players. Yeah, for sure. Um, just because of how like BYU has a pretty big following, so of course, like I feel like there's more eyes on me. But like even that, like like you said, it's not that far of a jump from like what I want to be for my siblings. That same, like I want to be the same for anybody else that looks at me that way sure. uh last question and i'll get you out of here on this because i'll kind of sort of revert it back to basketball but i don't want to get into like x's and o's too much but what's the number one thing that you've learned from this season with we've gone through it before the big step up in playing time the you know you've got more shots more scoring um but obviously the new coach and and everything else like what's kind of the number one thing that you've learned about yourself through the first half ish of the season um just that I'm more resilient than I think. You know, we started off the season a little rough, and um, I feel like it's easy when things are going that way to get down and just let it keep going that direction. Um, but I feel like, you know, me and my teammates, we've been able to kind of get together and decide, like, yes, it's been rough, but it's not going to keep going rough. We have control over how it's going to keep going, and we have control over, you know, the attitude that we're going to have going forward. So I think that's been a big lesson that I've learned. Nani Falatea, BYU Women's Basketball, one half of the law firm of the Gus and Falatea <laughs> Hooper uh, LLC, if you will. Uh, also, big sister and Chinese speaker. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for a couple of minutes. Yeah, thank you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Let's get it. Let's get it.